Hello, my name is Jade Heilman, and I'm a Public Sector Partner Solutions Consultant at Appium. In this video, I'll be showing you how Data Fabric Insights, or DFI, can be used in a specific use case to identify sales trends. This video is brought to you by Appian Academy Online and the Appian Academy YouTube channel. For more learning resources, check out the description below, and don't forget to like and subscribe. Before diving into the demo, I want to set the scene. In most organizations, data is siloed, so it can't be viewed simultaneously. This makes it very difficult for leaders to get a full, accurate picture of the state of their team. In order to make data-driven decisions, much time needs to be invested writing complicated code to join all this data together so it can be analyzed to inform business choices. Traditionally, a business user might put in a request to their Appian developer to create reports and dashboards for data tracking or decision making. These requests get added to the developer's backlog, which means business users have to wait for long periods of time, and developers need to spend precious sprint resources fulfilling these requests. For today's video, I'll be taking on the persona of a sales representative at Acme, a fictional company. Acme already has an Appian environment with several data sources connected to the system for their delivered application. As a sales representative, I need to answer the following question. What is the breakdown of our sales each month and which regions perform the best? Not only do I have to answer this question, but I have to answer it by the end of the week, and it's already Wednesday, so I have to answer this on top of all of my other daily activities. And to answer this question, I want to utilize the data we have to, prov to provide an informed answer. Now, Data Fabric Insights can be used for a variety of use cases. This is just one example that we're going to be seeing today, so I do want to add that highlight. So, as a business sales representative, I want to create this report. So I'm going to log into my Appian environment, go into Process HQ, and I'm going to be starting on the data catalog today. And what we're seeing is the data fabric of this application. This is every table that has been created in my Appian environment that I have access to view. And permissions for data fabric insights are provisioned by developers, and we're going to be taking a look at that at the end of this video. This is helpful for me as a sales, uh, sales representative because now I have visibility of all of my disparate data. So this saves me time from having to look up each individual table and each source. I can see it all together in one's place. Not only can I view all this, all this information, I can also search for the table that I'm most interested in diving deeper into. This saves me time from having to, again, log in and search through everything. And what I wanna highlight on this um, one individual table here is that we can see not only the name of the table, but we can also see the source that this data is coming from and the source of the related tables. And this just highlights that all of this information is connected together with Appian's data fabric and it can be coming from anywhere. So I'm gonna go ahead and click in on this. And when I do, I'm gonna be taken to my report builder. And this is where I can click to configure tables and reports. On the left-hand panel here, this is where I can see all of the fields that are in this table. And these field names come from the data model tab of the record type, which is up to developers to maintain so they're understandable for business users. And again, we're gonna be taking a look at that at the end of this video. To answer my business question for today, I'm gonna to be selecting the due date and the total due columns from the sales order table. And I'm also gonna be scrolling down to see all of the related tables and I'm going to be clicking into sales territory. So again, all of this information is coming from disparate sources, but I can navigate through it all from one place here to save me time. And now that I have my data in this grid, I can go ahead and add an action to my report so that as act, this action needs to be taken, when I start reviewing this data, um, I can do so right from this screen. So I'm going to be coming over to the right hand side to the setup tab, clicking on my update sales order action. And now I can select individual rows and update that sales order. Again, all from one place, all from one report, all from one grid. I don't even have to go to another page in my application. I can just do it right from here. Now that I have all this information in my chart in the center of my screen here, I can go ahead and manipulate these fields so that this chart makes the most sense for me. 
So I'm going to be dragging the total due column all the way to the right, for example. I can just really start to make this impactful for me. I can also format these values. So when I come to format values on the total due column here, I can add a dollar sign, add a comma in the thousands place, and remove all the decimals. And I can go ahead and update that here. Furthermore, I can group different columns. So I want to group the due date by month. In addition to um, formatting the values, I can also filter right from the screen as well. So I'm going to go over to the right hand side to the setup tab and add a filter. So since I want to see the most important, the most impactful deals, I'm going to go ahead and add a filter that um, filters out all of the total due uh, that is less than $75,000. So I'm going to go ahead and put a filter on my total due column, make sure that it's greater than or equal to $75,000. And since the year of interest is 2012, I can go ahead and put a filter on the due date column as well and make sure that it is between January 1st of 2012, first thing in the morning, to December 31st, 2012, last thing at the night. Go ahead and add that. And once I add those filters, I'm going to see my um, the rows of my table be condensed to only those values. Not only can I filter this data, but I can also sort it. So when I add a sort here, and I sort by total due, and I change the sort order here, then I can see the uh, sale that had the most outstanding due date, or due amount, and that was $606,000 in Canada on June, in June 2012. Now that I have this uh, chart, I can create uh, graphs directly from this to make this an even more impactful visualization. So with a click of a button, I can see a report be uh, a graph be generated from my data here. And this is again really helpful for me to visualize this information in another way that I can use to really impactfully answer my business questions. Not only can I make simple charts, but I can also, in the case of a bar chart, make them more complex by adding a stacking component. So I can add another um, y-axis here, change this to be due date and sales territory. And again, I can just really get into the details of customizing it so it's as impactful for me to answer my business question as possible. I can also go down here and choose a color scheme to again, just make sure that it's exactly what I want. Now that I have my report and it's exactly how I want it and it's super impactful for me and helpful to answer my business question, now I want to understand what insights I can take and what actions I can take next. And this is really just to wow my boss. I can send them this report and answer that question, but what's more impactful than providing next steps and more action that can be taken based on this data? So to do this, I'm gonna be leveraging AI. So I'm gonna come over to the right-hand side of my screen here and go to AI Copilot. And I'm gonna ask what are two insights and actions I can take based on this report? This is really helpful to brainstorm some ideas of actions that I can take and this frees up more time for me as a sales representative to actually take these actions. So for example, some insights and an action would be to identify practice in the Southwest Territory that could be adopted by other territories. That's fantastic. So not only can I tell my manager um, what regions did the best in 2012, I can also say from this information, perhaps we should consider doing X, Y, or Z. And now that I have this report, I want to save it to refer back to it later. 
So I'm going to go ahead and call this sales regions. Go ahead and update this. I'm going to save it. And now that I have this report saved, I'm going to go ahead and close this and return back to the home page of my process, um, process HQ environment. When I come to the home page of Process HQ, this is where I can see all of the reports that I've created or that have been shared with me. And I can see this report that I just created, so I can go ahead and share it with whoever needs, it needs to be shared with, or I can go ahead and add it to a dashboard as well. So I have this dashboard here that I've created that is my go-to place as a sales representative, um, just to make sure that I'm hitting my metrics and staying on track. When I click into my dashboard, I can see the KPIs that I'm tracking and all of these reports with all of this other information that helps me in my day to day. And I can go ahead and come over to the left hand side here and actually add that report I just created to my dashboard with the click of a button and a drag of my mouse. And now it's on here. So not only am I able to create reports, with, uh, with this low code report builder. In a matter of seconds, I'm also able to create my dashboards in a similar fashion, again, in a matter of seconds. Now, the last thing that I want to highlight before I switch over to the developer view is an even more quick and impactful way to make reports as a business user. And that is coming back to our data catalog with our guided experience. And much like the name says, this is a guided way that business users can make reports with an even more natural language approach. So I can go ahead and begin clicking and typing in the information that I want. So I want to, I want another report that shows the sales orders by region. So I'm gonna go ahead and do the count of my sales orders. I can group it by the related table, scrolling down here of sales territory, specifically selecting the name field. And then I can sort this uh, by sales order ID in ascending or descending order. And within a matter of seconds, I was able to build the bones of this report. And I, when I go ahead and click create report, that will take me to the report builder to make it even more impactful and robust for me and my needs. So that's everything that I wanted to highlight from the business user perspective. And now as a developer, you may be wondering how difficult it is to actually set up DFI for a business user. But the answer is it's not difficult at all. All you have to do is add the user or group of users to the report creators group in the environment and prepare the record type. In a matter of minutes, you can get a user up and running with DFI. Let's go ahead and take a look at what this looks like. Now I am a developer who is building these applications for my business users. And I'm on the environment level view now, and I can see all the applications in my environment. So from here, I'm going to be going to the object level, uh, a list of all the objects in my environment. And I'll be searching for the report creators group here. And that brings up the data fabric report creators group. And when I click into this, I can add any users or groups that need to have access to the data catalog and the ability to create reports in DFI. And once I've done that, I'm going to go into the application with the record types that I want to show up in Data Fabric Insights. So I'm going to go ahead and click into my application here. And the first thing I'm going to do is configure the object level security. So when I'm doing this, really, I just want to make sure that users have at least a viewer permission so that they can view those record types in that data catalog in Data Fabric Insights. And once I've configured that, I'm going to go ahead and click into my record type. And from the record type, I'm going to be configuring additional security and cleaning up my data. So from the data model tab, we obviously see the fields and the relationships and the relationship names. As a developer, I want to make sure that these fields and names are representative of what they actually do and what they actually mean so that business users can report on them effectively. 
And once I've done that, I'm going to go into the Workspaces tab and ensure that this is toggled on. And this just allows the record type, again, to be shown as a table in Data Fabric Insights at all. And once that's been done, the last thing I want to do is configure the security at the record and the row level and the action level security. And this is to ensure that business users are reporting on the individual rows and records that they're allowed to see. We don't want, let's say, a sales representative to see another sales representative's data, or much less like the finance, uh, the finance team's data. So we want to make sure that that is all locked down, but once the um, security has been configured on the record type at the row level, that will propagate to Data Fabric Insights. In the same vein, the actions, um, the actions on the record type, we want to configure so that the person who is making these reports and should be taking actions is at least an initiator on that record action um, so that they can add that to the report and then take that action. But with that, that's about it. We have now allowed users to take the full advantage of Data Fabric Insights with the proper security measures in place. And it only took a developer a few minutes to set up, which is a huge, huge time savings versus having to build the reports or dashboards for the users. With that, let's go ahead and summarize everything that we saw here today in this demo. Switching hats back to my sales representative, we saw how I was able to now make ad hoc reports to help answer my time sensitive questions with an accessible low code tool that allows me to build high impact reports. With DFI, I was able to navigate Acme's fragmented data landscape to pull together key information about our sales organization and visualize it to view trends, measure KPIs, and inform next steps for sales leaders to grow revenue at Acme. I was able to do all of this quickly since I didn't have to join to data together in SQL, pull it into Excel, or ask a developer to build me uh, a report in the interface designer. Since DFI is low code, I could build these high impact reports and dashboards myself in a matter of minutes. This saved me time so I could meet my deadline and save developers time during their sprint so they could focus on other higher priority tasks. In addition to saving myself and my coworkers time, I was also able to make data-driven decisions with confidence and drive revenue faster than ever before. If you wanna learn more, go ahead and check out the description for additional resources. But with that, Thank you for watching.